Guys, we got Willard back on the dyno. We're gonna do an upgraded intake, an upgraded exhaust, and today we're gonna hit 500 horsepower. We will hit 500 horsepower today. One way or another, Willard is going 500. All right, guys, Willard has been amazing, but we've been accused of doing our mods backwards. Yeah. Like we're stupid, don't know what we're doing. We should start with what? I mean, the basics, intake and exhaust. Those are like, and maybe- An air horn. <laughs> we're not gonna do that today. No. But we're testing an intake and an exhaust. We've got injectors on this thing, we've got tune on this thing, and we've got turbo on this thing. We're making 451. What? <laughs> 451, <laughs> our 76, 76 horsepower injectors. And we'll see if that intake and exhaust can get us to 500 horse. Yes, yeah, so just so what's going on, we did upgrade the injectors since the last time we've seen this vehicle. Last yep. time we had our 75 horsepower, you know, eco-friendly, super awesome injectors. These are our next size larger power jets, our power jet stage two. And uh, yes, yeah, so they should pick up some power there. Mm -hmm. So we got to figure out the testing regimen. We're going to test it, just injectors, get a baseline, see what kind of power we're making. Then we're going to put an air intake on it, stock exhaust. Then. Airbox comes back off, put in aftermarket exhaust. Yep. Then final airbox back on. So we're gonna do each one individually so we can see how much power each one makes on its own and As a what system. they make together. And we will we will put to rest the question: is it smarter to start with an air take air intake and exhaust or smarter to start with a turbo and tuning? Huh? So let's get started. All right, guys, we have done our testing with the stock air box. This is the same setup, but we did upgrade the injectors to our stage two, and we're sitting right around 471 horsepower. That's about a 20, 25 horsepower bump over the previous PowerJet injector. So this is like a 100 horsepower injector in the PowerJet series, really clean, really good. And yeah, so stock air box, 471 horsepower. Uh, I think it's time to switch air boxes and see if we pick up some power with that nice SMB intake. For the cold air kit on this, we're gonna use SMB's kit for the second gen 94 through 02 Dodge Ram trucks. It's pretty complete, comes a box, filter, tube, everything you need to put this on there. And uh, yeah, it still lets us draw air from the fender, which is hopefully cold. And yeah, we're gonna see how it does. This is the kit we're gonna use. All right, so the SMB air box is installed. I wanted an ultra high flow filter, so I put one of our power flow, power driven diesel filters in the box. It fits great, looks amazing. So thanks to the box, SMB. Uh, their filter is fine. You don't have to change it, you could, but you know, it's a good filter. Anyway, uh, this stock box did have a can and air filter in it. So that was an upgrade. I didn't realize it had that in there. So I'll be curious to see if we actually have a gain with this air box. Uh, it fits good, took about 30 minutes to install. And uh, yeah, let's see if it made any more power. All right, guys, we are now done filter testing. It has been quite the job. We've been here four hours yeah, testing different combinations because we weren't satisfied with the results. What the it's, heck happened? Air filters didn't make as much difference as I was hoping. And so we're really operating inside that margin of error. So I actually put the stock box on and off a couple times going back and forth, <laughs> yeah. trying to figure it out. So we started with the stock box. With that, we played without, uh, we had some inconsistencies. We pulled that plastic duct off the side. That's in the fender where like guides yep. the cold air to your box. We could box. have good, a one good run and then the, it would, I don't know if suction or whatever, it would move the, it would suck that plastic guide in, and then we'd have some bad runs, we'd have to realign it. So we ended mm -hmm. up pulling it out. That actually made the best number. That is that 471 number we mm -hmm. kind of settled on. And then the, we put the SMB box in as, as it came, SMB filter, mm -hmm. all assembled, and we made like, maybe, I think it was like two more horsepower. Yeah, and like, so what? that's when we started going back and forth trying to figure it out. We played with a lot of things. We played with, first we put a power driven filter in there. That's a known filter. We know it flows good. Yeah. We picked up a couple horsepower with that. So that was good. And then, then once you did that, we, we played with that. So we noticed that that under, during the pull, it was sucking in a little bit. And it was actually- it was actually got sucked into the box. It starts laying into the filter itself. Yeah. Um, and so then that like kind of seals off half the filter. So it's so only just, able to utilize half the so filter. So we just removed this. That, so that is actually the best combo so far. Yeah. Force averaging around 479 horsepower, PDD box, no- SMB box, sorry, power, PDD filter. Power driven box, yeah. SMB box, <laughs> power driven filter. <laughs> no panel, <laughs> no thanks man. Todd. Anyway, um, the next best was the, again, no panel. 
SMB filter. Yes. And then we tried all sorts of other combos without the lid. That was worse. No box at all. That was worse. But the very worst combo that we tried, no filter, no tube, no nothing. Just open, open turbo. turbo. So that made the least amount of power, which is actually really cool because if you go on the flow bench yeah. and you try that type testing, you can, see. you can see it. It doesn't flow very good. Yeah, the way Using a filter to like duck the air. Almost like velocity stack, like guiding it. If you have just an open pipe, it flows worse than a pipe with a filter on it. Yeah. Very crazy, but it's true. We've proven so. it time and time again. And so the, the truck actually backs it up. So now it's time to go put that MBRP four inch exhaust system on the sink. See if we, and put the stock box back on because I want to test yep. that alone. So put the stock box back on, exhaust, then put back on the SMB. I'm gonna get combo. really good at this. <laughs> and see, can we hit that 500 horsepower? Let's do it. Let's go. All right, guys, we are done testing with a stock airbox on the MBRP 4 inch exhaust system. We made 480 horsepower. That's like one horsepower more than we did with the air intake alone. But it's actually a bigger story, a bigger difference than that. I want to show you some stuff on the screen here because it really, the exhaust, in my opinion, was a better uh, power adder. And this is why. Oh, I yeah, pulled up. for yeah. sure. And even just driving on the dyno, I could tell. First of all, before I click away, 1171 torque. I think it was like 1,020, 1,040 before. So. Mm. A good Big bump torque. there, yeah. and you'll see it. Um, the brighter line is the um, four inch exhaust. The duller line is stock airbox factory exhaust. So this yellow is a torque curve. So you can see the torque is way higher, but notice here, they start in the, like Meyer did a good job starting. This is a very accurate dyno. We didn't like- I actually started at a lower boost and lower power. Yeah, you did, because you're trying to lower. That new, like, the new exhaust had a disadvantage and it immediately overcame it. And so the bright yellow line, you can see the exhaust just destroys what the intake did as far as spool up is concerned. So the turbine wheel is the thing that generates power to the compressor wheel. The way the turbine works is pressure in versus pressure out. The bigger delta, the bigger change you have from pressure in to pressure out, the more efficient, the faster, the quicker that spool up will be. So when we put this big four inch exhaust behind this turbo, we are decreasing the pressure behind it. We're not changing the pressure in front of it. We have a bigger drop across that turbine, meaning it's gonna spool up quicker and faster. And, and we see that and you felt that. Like you, oh, you can feel a dyno. It. Yeah, because yeah, I've been trying to hit the same, like start at the same boost level. And I, so I just did my routine mm -hmm. and boost is way higher. I'm like, whoa, back it off. And I didn't realize like it was just making that much more. Um, boost for the same power level, which is, is great. That's what cools down EGTs, and you can see it. We made more power here, and EGTs were a little bit lower. They started basically the same, they went down, and then obviously once we started making power, they kind of leveled and down up. Down here's your boost. You can see boost. the boost just came up way quicker. Peak yeah. boost at the end was about 30, the same. 39 versus 33 like right there at 2000 as it was spooling. Wow, which is why your torque was so much higher. Yeah, way higher. And then peak boost was 44.5 versus um, 42.2. So, so again, you have more turbine drive energy yeah. and that makes, like allows you to make more uh, boost with it. Also, you're talking, I was like looking at the, the spool up data. So this thing hit about a thousand foot pounds of torque at 1900 RPM versus before it was um, 1960. So 60 RPM sooner. If you go by time, it's even better. Mm. Thousand foot pounds right there at 3.4 seconds versus 4.3 seconds. So 0.9 seconds faster to get into power. So this is stuff you will feel as you're driving. You can say on a dyno sheet, you only picked up eight horsepower. This truck will feel like you picked up way more than eight horsepower because it's gonna be responsive. The turbo's gonna spool quicker. So a uh, big fan of the, of the four inch exhaust, even though the peak number didn't really change all that much, it sure made it drive quicker and faster and easier. So, so yeah, same here. You can see horsepower takes off, climbs faster, and just stays higher the whole way through. I mean, the, the difference in peak power is not huge, it's not. But this feels faster. This feels like more than a horsepower bump because right here, it's probably a 20 horsepower bump or a 30 horsepower bump. Oh yeah, so like let's just say right here, 2200 RPM, 464 versus 445. That's 20, 20 horsepower. 19 horsepower. So you think, wow, 20 horsepower is a big deal and that's just because of how fast that turbo can get moving. So anyway, we are not to 500 yet. We are not. We're hoping so, individually, they're not gonna make it. So is, 
is the combination going to make us there? Uh, I'm curious. I, so honestly, I really I'm, wanted it to happen. I know. I, I, did really too. I don't know that it's going to. I, I thought, man, we've got to be able to get 20 horsepower out of the, or I guess it'd be 21 horsepower with that. So I guess that's a pretty decent gain if you got 21 just of in, in and out. But anyway, let's put that uh, SMB on. We're going to use that same setup that was most powerful with the open side, the PD filter, and uh, we're going to cross our fingers and see if we crack 500. <laughs> let's do it. Let's go. All right, guys, results are in. We went from 471 horsepower? 471. To 483, so 12 horsepower. Yep. 12 horsepower. 12 horsepower. That's going from a stock <laughs> exhaust, stock box, to a SMB intake with our filter and an MBRP 4-inch exhaust. That was the best combination we had the whole day, 483 horsepower. Yep. So people that will tell you that intake exhaust don't do anything, they lied to you. 12 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is a little a little disheartening. Well, I will say the exhaust, I think, was really good. I mean, we, the spool up difference, you got out of the truck right away, it's like, dude, I could tell a difference. So you would feel that with that exhaust, yeah. that spool up. It is a worthy mod. Airflow is good, it's all good. But very typical people say the first thing you do the truck, oh, get an air intake and exhaust. That's some of the worst bang for your buck stuff you can do. I, I mean, that right there is about the same cost as a turbo. And we just show that turbo is worth hundreds of horsepower over, this, over the stock one, where this one is not worth hundreds of horsepower. So the tuning, uh, injectors, and turbo, all the stock components can support those reasonably well. This just complements those modifications. Mm -hmm. But here's the dyno graph. It is better. Together, we made the most power with them together than we did apart. Like, individually, they were better together. Yep. And so this, I mean, we, we compared before the um, factory intake, stock exhaust to factory intake, uh, four inch exhaust. This is the um, both SM, both sorry, both four inch exhausts, but one actually has a uh, SMB intake. And you can yes. see the SMB intake also helped a little bit. Boost was marginally up the whole way. It is flowing more air. It's just EGT is a little better. EGT is a little spool's better. Spool is a little quicker. Makes a touch more peak power, very minimal. The spool up was better. Yep, it has better manners. The power difference isn't a lot. Yeah. But so, hmm. yeah, I, yeah, overall, Good mods, um, but we need to hit 500. So we promised 500 horsepower. We started off at 471 with those injectors. Yep. We did an intake and made 479. Not 500. <laughs> we made we did an exhaust and made 480. Still not 500. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, then we finished at 483 with Which both. Which is not 500. Okay, got. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we got so, 500. Now there's a little bit of stuff. We got something that we can do. Sure, so a there. YouTube commenter mentioned a couple of videos ago. Back with the AirDog install. AirDog install, that because we disconnected the battery, we actually reset the tuning in the Quadzilla to the factory Quadzilla tune. So our mm. custom tuning got removed. And we realized that, and we didn't want to change it because we had all that data. We wanted to keep the same tune and keep like being able to progress with our data and be able to relate it back. So we've just kept the same Quadzilla tuning up until now. We're gonna throw our custom tunes back into it, the custom tunes that were written for stock injectors and stock turbo. Yeah. And we're gonna see if that makes 500 horsepower. And if it doesn't, oh, it's gonna we make, can then make- It's gonna make 500. Meyer. <laughs> give me at least, okay, give me at least one retune. <laughs> Let me throw one, it in. <laughs> one tune and one revision if you one need it. One revision if I need it. If you need it, otherwise, I don't wanna blow with it up, but I will. We're, I mean, I'm <laughs> done being, being south it, of 500. I, I, still, I haven't finished the carpet in my basement, and it works really good for transporting <laughs> carpet. <laughs> I need it. This is a pretty sweet truck, but I will blow. You better get there. We better get there. Let's go. I've done it! <laughs> 508! 508! Oh my gosh! It runs another day. We have it! A 500 horsepower BP tow truck! It is amazing! <laughs> it does so good! Man, look at this horsepower curve. It really carried better. It is a, I mean, this is, this is the biggest change we've seen all day. <laughs> yeah. By double. 25 <laughs> horsepower over, without the tune. That's yep. pretty good. EGT's well, the are... stock tune, the can tunes from yes. yes. Yep, Quadzilla can tunes. Yep. The uh, torque is way higher. Look how much better it is. It's EGT is cooler the whole entire way. Oh yeah, and it starts separating, so you know it's running cooler. It made less boost. We just have a little bit more timing in that tune. That's yeah. all. And so it's, it's great because less tiny bit less boost, but way more power. Yep. And you started this runs very fair because you started lower. Uh, yep. Like actually in the window, so like you had to overcome that little bit of deficit. The timing, you can see there's a little bit of a gap here in the spool up, or a little bit. 
maybe behind a touch, that's probably that little extra timing. Mm -hmm. Or it could be because you started to slow. Yeah, and we, we did this. close. This custom tuning is for stock injector, stock turbo. True, like if we, if we actually went in, re-optimized it, like wrote a new tune for the big injectors, the turbo, just the things we've done to it, we'd probably get rid of a lot of that. But yeah, freaking, it does talking, good. Yeah, we'll get a little bit better. This is very, very good. So 500 horsepower, 6064, towing beast, still alive, didn't have to ghetto fog it. What a great day. <laughs> this is an amazing day. And I still have something to go get my carpet wet. <laughs> it's a win. <laughs> All right. Willard never disappoints. It came through in the end, and I still freaking love this truck. It drives. It's, it's great. I mean, it's got such a simple build list, but it's so capable. Yeah. Like, guys, this truck, I paid 11000 for it. And what have we done? We've done a turbo. Yep. We're now on a set of injectors. Yep. Quadzilla tuning. Yep, custom tuning with that. We did inject a transmission, of course, because the stock one is nowhere near it. No chance. That's your biggest, most expensive piece. Yep, for sure. And now intake and exhaust. Yep, and an air dog. And an air dog, yes. You need an air dog with these VP44s. This is still a very affordable build. There's nothing exotic here. Yeah. We're over 500 horsepower. We're knocking on the door, 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. Drives nice, tows like a dream. And there's, there's more we can do this. This is, we're still warming up, but we have a 500 horsepower. We have a 500 horsepower VP tow truck. We have finally... Finished. Remember what, Will, what Terry, we said? Will Terry never cracked 500. As we did it. <laughs> I don't know what that guy's problem was. <laughs> yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, it was easy. But um, yeah, so the 6064, again, that's a drop in turbo. Super friendly, easy to drive. We saw the stock exhaust manifold on. We just did a video on that, how that could have some improvements there. Mm -hmm. We're on stock head bolts. We did a head bolt retorque. Hopefully, you saw that little short we did. So, still on stock head bolts. I haven't had studs yet. Mm -hmm. This is a very simple, unassuming build. You drive this up to the gas pump and. Oh, yeah. Nobody's no going to think you're special, and you no can wax knows. people. Yeah. This it, thing puts you in your seat, man. It's awesome. It, it does. And I feel like the what I like about this build is that we did, I feel like we started in a very logical order. Like, yeah. if I had to do it again, I'd probably do everything in the exact same order. We started with um, a turbo and injectors. Mm -hmm. Like, those two go hand in hand. Those are great to, great options together. Oh, first tuning, sorry. Yes. Then tuning, uh, then um, and turbo and injectors. And then we start throwing the other things at it, the intake, the exhaust. The air dog, you want to make sure that you maintain air pressure, uh, fuel pressure during all yes. that. So that's definitely a good idea. So the air dog could be definitely towards the front of that. But yeah, it's a super solid build. Well, I want you to see on the road. Next time you see this, we're going to be towing trailers. I want to see what is a 500 horsepower VP44 tow like? Do we still have VGT control? How much power can we make in towing tune? And uh, yeah, from there, we're going to just keep on building this thing up. So what should we do next, guys? How much power can we make with this thing? Because we're 500, not even trying. Yeah, try a little bit. Well, we did try a little bit. But I will say one of the very next things we need to do is an exhaust manifold yeah. because I can actually see this one's quite shrunk. <laughs> yeah. So before anyway, it causes issues, yeah. I'll probably get one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, guys, I think that's wrap this video up. I appreciate you watching. Please, you know, thumbs up, like, subscribe, add a comment. Let us know what you want to see with this truck. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thanks, guys.